on, let's stand on our feet. Come on. Let's stand on our feet and praise God this morning. Praise God. He's worthy. Praise God. He's worthy. He's worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. God is worthy. We thank God even in the midst of all the things that are going on around us, even in the midst of everything that is going on. We know that God is our protector. God is our shield. And we are trusting God that he's going to take care of of us. We thank God for the opportunity to come together and worship this morning. Wherever you are, we are worshiping God, lifting up holy hands to God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in the house, into the house of the Lord. And when we get there, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All these lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Thank you, God. For this day, amen, that you have blessed us. At this time, whoever and whatever the situation may be in your life, we come to the altar in place right where you are. God is able today. He is a healer. He is. We're praying, Father. We're praying today for those that are sick and shut in. We're praying for Sister Rosa, Trustee Rosa English. Uh, we are praying for uh, Trustee, uh, excuse me, Sister Shirley Wills, uh, Sister Ola Basket, Brother Roy Mathis, and Sister Hattie Lee that on our sick and shut in. Not only that, we are praying for those that uh, have experience bereavement in your families. I want you to know that it was Jesus said, I never leave you nor forsake you. God will be with you. Whatever you're going through right now, let us pray. Gracious God, we come. We come in your presence. Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and what you still are doing. We come, O oh Lord, Father God, thanking you for your benefits, salvation, your love, your kindness, the patience you have given us, the wisdom, healing. We thank you, Lord. So, Father God, as we come before your presence, we ask now, dear God, that you continue to shower your blessings down upon us. We pray for our nation. We pray for our national leaders, our local leaders, ones that have to make decisions that govern other folk lives, oh God, that you would give them wisdom, that they would seek you, Father God, and place all personal agendas to, it, to the side. No, oh, Father God, that we pray, oh God, Father God, that somebody that's listening today is going through something. Let them know, Father God, is not the end. That they could be the beginning of joy and peace in their lives. You said, ask and it shall be given, seek and we shall find. You said, knock and the door shall be opened unto us. So we ask now, God, in the name of Jesus, oh, Father God, to give us that peace, give us that joy. Oh, Father God, somebody may be discouraged right now, God, but we know that you are the one. Oh, Father God, you're the one that led Elijah. You're the one that he led, that led David, the prophets of old, and you're the same today as you was yesterday. Bless now, bless us with a mighty powerful word from you today. We listen and we pray, Father God, that we will not only hear your words, but we will hearken your words. We will listen to obey. Thank you, God. Move into nursing homes. Move, Father God, this morning. Move upon our sick and shut in this morning. Strengthen them. And then those that are working in health care, in the hospitals and EMTs and those that are working in the schools and Oh, Father God, that have to go to work every day, God, shield them, strengthen them, protect them, uphold them with your mighty, righteous right hand. Bar the door, Father God, 
with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And we give you praise. We give you praise. Lord, we lift up our hands to you. We give you praise and honor. In the name of Jesus, amen, 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 amen. Come on, let's continue to praise with our praise ministry.
continue to praise God for his goodness and his mercy that he shows towards us. Anybody grateful? That despite what you've been through, despite that we're still in the pandemic, despite you may still be sick in your body, despite your children may still be acting up or seeming as you haven't taught them anything about the Lord, despite your spouse may be acting up and acting as if he doesn't love you or she doesn't love you. Isn't it good to know that God's mercy and his grace yes. and his love, he still shows it towards us. Yes. And that's a reason to praise him. That's a reason to give him glory. And that's the reason to lift him up. Worship him with us today.
this time of worship. We thank you today for brand new mercy. That when we woke up this morning, we woke up with brand new mercy. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege and this opportunity to gather once again together in this building as your people. We thank you for your presence here with us. And we ask that you have your way, that you be glorified in this place today. We ask that you heal, you deliver, and you set free today. Somebody here today, Lord, needs to be saved before it's too late. And I ask you, Lord, that you save them in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. 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 If you will open up your Bibles this morning to James, the first chapter of James. James, the first chapter, verses 26 and 27. James 1, 26 and 27. And I just want to say it's good to see all of you here today. It's good that God has allowed us to gather together one more time. And we thank him for that. It's good to be able to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. Amen. Amen. I would like for everyone to please stand for the reverence of God's word. Amen. James 1, 26 and 27. I will be reading from the New Living Translation. And it reads as thus. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself, and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God, the Father, means caring for orphans and widows in their distress, and refusing to let the world corrupt you. For a subject I would like to use today, ain't nothing like the real thing. Ain't nothing like the real thing. Some years ago, Coca-Cola had a famous slogan. Some of you may remember it, and some of you are not old enough to remember it. But they had a, a slogan which said, ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. Amen? Meaning that there were other brands of cola drinks, but they were all copycats. Because as far as they were concerned, Coke was the only real thing. And in times like these, when there is such an influx of fake news and false statements and half-truths, conspiracy theories, theories, lies, and, and such, we certainly need to know the truth concerning our salvation at this time with all of this fake stuff and fake things being said because ain't nothing right. like the real thing. You see, there are many different kinds of religions practiced uh, all over the world today. The Holman Bible Dictionary defines religion as an organized system of doctrine with an approved pattern of behavior and a proper form of worship. Pure religion, that is, the real thing, as taught here in verse 27 by the Apostle James, is the outward expression of worship is the outward expression of worship. That's how we truly worship God. Uh, we don't worship God by just attending church. 
We don't worship God by, by being a greeter, a preaching from the pulpit, or being a deacon, or singing in the choir. That's not how we worship God. We worship God by how we live. Amen? And so that's a, 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 an expression. Pure religion is an expression of worship. Pure religion, listen to me, governs every area of our lives. There's no aspect of our lives that pure religion doesn't govern. Now listen, being religious does not necessarily mean that a person is a Christian. I, I, I need to say that again. Being religious does not necessarily mean that a person is a Christian because Christianity is one of many religions such as Judaism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Scientology, and many others. Our text today speaks of the kind of religion that God our Father accepts which means that there is another kind of religion or religions that God our Father does not accept. God doesn't accept everything that man calls worship. God doesn't accept everything that man calls uh, religion, amen? Uh, and so, 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 saints, the idea that uh, all religions lead to God our Father is not true. Anybody ever heard anybody talk about that? Say that? That all religions lead to God our Father? To our God? Jehovah God? All religions do not lead to God our Father. Uh, it is not true that it doesn't matter what religion you embrace as long as you embrace a religion. The Apostle James makes it very clear uh, that it does matter. This text teaches that one cannot claim to be a Christian, that is, to have the real thing, to have pure religion without faith in Jesus and following the teachings of Jesus. Christian, the word Christian itself has a, as, it, as its root word, Christ. Uh -huh. So we can't claim to be Christians and live in any kind of way we want to live. Doing anything that we want to do, talking however we want to talk, saying whatever we want to say. We can't claim to be Christians. We have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Christ, can I get a witness? Christians believe that Jesus is the only true Savior. He is the true and living God. We believe in Acts, the fourth chapter, and the twelfth verse, which declares salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved, but the name Jesus. Church, the name is Jesus. Jesus is his name. James, the half-brother of Jesus, is the author of this book. He wrote this letter to the church for the purpose of exposing hypocritical practices and to teach right Christian behavior. Right. By no means is James advocating that works save us. However, he was concerned that Christians not only knew the right message, that is, being hearers of the word, but that they obeyed the right message, right. that is, to be doers of the word. And so he writes here in this passage about the kind of religion that God our Father accepts. Because God doesn't accept, as I said before, uh, a lot of our mess. Amen? He writes about the kind of religion that God our Father accepts. The kind of religion that God approves. He contrasts, when you read the book of James, uh, this first chapter, he contrasts vain 
which is worthless religion with true, pure religion. Again, please keep in mind that James is not teaching that we are saved by the acts of work, because we know that we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. He is teaching that these acts of work are the evidence that we are saved. It, it, we can't say that we are saved and sitting on the stool or do nothing. All right, come on. Amen? Amen. We, we can't say that we are saved. So this is the evidence that we are saved. And you can read more about what James says about uh, work and faith in the second chapter of James, uh, particularly uh, verse 26. These acts of work right. prove that we have pure religion. In other words, we have the real thing. Right. Let us discuss three characteristics that will show up in the life of a person who is practicing the kind of religion that God accepts. I'm just going to talk about three things today. The first one we see, we see it in verse 26. Hopefully you still got your Bibles open. You can see it in verse 26. The first thing, the person who is practicing the kind of religion that God approves, that person controls his or her tongue. That's the word. They control their tongue in verse 26. The Bible teaches us in James, the third chapter, that the tongue is a very small member of our body. It is. But if it's not used right, it's deadly. Amen? I, I know I've got some witnesses in here. Y'all can speak through those masks. <laughs> it, it, it is deadly. It is a world of evil. It can corrupt the whole person, and it is a fire that is ignited straight from hell. Guess who's behind that? When we don't control our tongue. Because of our tongues, out of the same mouth comes praise, like we've been doing in here this morning to God. Comes praise and cursing and cussing. How is that? How is that? You see, with our tongues, we bless and praise God, and then we use that same tongue, that same tongue to curse and cuss and slander and gossip about people who are created in the image of God. James, the fourth chapter, verses 11 and 12 states, and I quote, brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother, and that is another Christian brother or sister, or judges him, speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but sitting in judgment of it. There is only one lawgiver and judge. The one who is able to save and destroy. Amen. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Unquote. Saints, whenever we use our tongues to hurt others and tear others down instead of building them up and encouraging them, whenever we use our tongues to lie, complain, murmur, Grumble, whenever we do this, we need to know that something is wrong with our religion. All right. We should stop and ask ourselves, do I have the real thing? Do I have pure religion? Do I have the kind of religion that God accepts and approves? Am I behaving as a Christian should? What kind of example am I setting for my children and others who are observing my behavior? All right. Some people even, it's sad to say, use their tongues to curse their own lives and the lives of their family. 
you've heard it. They said they start claiming sicknesses. My migraine, my high blood pressure, my diabetes. It's not mine. And I'm trying my best to give it to God. Can I get some witnesses in here? We curse ourselves by what's coming out of our mouth. We say things to, to our children. We tell them they're stupid, that they're not going to amount to anything. What are you doing? What are we allowing to come out of our mouths? We're cursing our, our own lives and cursing the lives of our children and our family. We need to practice saying what God says about us. What God says about our circumstances. We need to say, I'm not going to be broke all the time. Because my God is rich. Amen. I'm a child of the king. We need to say what God says about us. That I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I don't care who, who thinks that I'm fan or whatever else you may think. I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Can I get some witnesses in here? Say what God says about us. I am a head. I'm not the tail. I am above. I'm not beneath. I'm blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed in my going out. Blessed in my coming in. I'm a blessed person. I have the favor of God resting on my life. It may not look like it now. It may not seem like it now. But God, the favor of God is resting upon You can't speak what you don't know. Get into this Bible and learn what God says. Say what God says. I'm the lender and not the borrower. So yeah, I might have to borrow right now, but it ain't going to be this way always. Hallelujah. Say what God says about you. Because the power of life and death is in the tongue, speaking into existence. An unbridled tongue, let me tell you about an unbridled tongue. And this is something, I don't care who we are, we all have to deal with this one. I don't, it doesn't matter how long we've been saved, how much we love God, we all have to deal with bride, allowing the Holy Spirit to bridle our tongues. Amen? An unbridled tongue reveals a vain, worthless religion. It's no good. It's useless. It reveals that God is not controlled, is not in control of our lives because only God can tame the tongue through his Holy Spirit. An unbridled tongue reveals a heart that is not controlled by the Holy Spirit, but is controlled by the devil and flesh carnality. Because our mouths speak the issues of our hearts. Sometimes all you have to do is listen to people talk. And it reveals the condition of their heart. So church... Do you have the real thing? Because ain't nothing like the real thing. The next thing, the next thing we see in verse 27, and that is the person who has the real thing, if they got pure religion, that person does good deeds for others. Verse 27. Look at verse 27. That person does good deeds for others. Pure religion, the real thing, leads to benevolent behavior and acts of service to others. It expresses itself externally. In other words, it is faith with works, faith with legs and hands. It is faith expressed not only by what we say, but by what we do as well. It is faith demonstrated because faith without work is D-E-A-D, -D, dead. Church, we resemble Jesus best when we show mercy and kindness to the unfortunate. It is when we give to others that we obey the teachings of Jesus to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father, our Father in heaven. Some, some Christians got problems with that when God has told us, you do your good works, let people see them. So they'll see what you're doing and give me glory. Not give you glory. 
but give me glory. That God wants people to say about him, God is good and he got good people. God is blessing me through people. Amen. First John, the third chapter, verse 16 declares, and I quote again, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? How can the love of God be in the person who sees his sister uh, or his brother that, that's in need and don't reach out to help them. Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and truth, unquote. A person with pure religion gives willingly to help others. Jesus underscored the importance of helping others in his parable in Matthew, the 25th chapter, uh, verses 31 through 46. He speaks of the Son of Man coming in his glory and separating and rewarding or withholding rewards from individuals according to what they have done or failed to do for others. Those who have helped others will be blessed. And those who have not helped others will be punished. Again, works do not save us, but works is the evidence that we have the real thing because ain't nothing like the real thing. Uh -huh. The final thing, the final thing that we see as I hasten, you all know that I'm hasten. <laughs> Everybody here know I'm hasten. <laughs> as I hasten, to close this message, the final thing that we're going to talk about today is the person who had this pure religion, the kind of religion that God accepts. That person lives holy. Lives holy. And you see that in verse 27. Now I want you to know to be holy means to be set apart for God's use, for God's service. And we've been talking about uh, serving God in our Sunday school classes for the last few Sundays. But uh, to be set apart for him. And I need to say this because somebody say, when you talk about holy, you're talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm talking about a lifestyle. I'm talking about the way we live. We got to be holy. We must live holy lives. We, we, we must, uh, people ought to be able to look at us and see and listen to us and know that God, the Father, is living inside of us and the Son is living inside of us and the Holy Spirit is controlling us. Holiness is not a denomination, but a way of life. God tells us in his word, be holy, for I am holy. Be holy for I am holy. He further declares that holiness without, this is what he says, no man will see the Lord. No person will see the Lord. Pure religion helps us to live holy as we obey the word of God. When we obey God's word, when we become doers of God's word, when we practice God's word, we're going to live holy lives. It won't happen unless we practice God's word. It will not happen unless we do what God says for us to do. Can I get a witness? You can say amen. amen. Pure religion, as we keep, keep God's word, help us to live holy lives, to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. That is what the, the, the Bible, James says here, keep ourselves unspotted from the world is by God's grace to keep ourselves from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. It means that we obey God's command as found in Romans the 12th chapter. Y'all know it. Verses one and two, to present our bodies. To present your body as a living sacrifice. God doesn't need a dead sacrifice. He needs us while we're living and we're vibrant. A li present your body. That's all we 
got to put on the altar now is ourselves. I surrender all. Surrender everything to God. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, for that's our act of worship. That's how we worship him. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Hallelujah. Church, the person with pure religion, that is the real thing, has been changed. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, yes. Can you say today, can you honestly say today, I know I've been changed. Yes. Can you say that today? I know I've been changed. He or she, that person, is a brand new creature in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. Can you say, I know I've been changed? Or better yet, can those who know you best say that you have changed for the better? Can people who know you, can your family members, can your friends, can people on your job say, that person... You are changed. You're not like you used to be. You don't talk like you used to talk. You don't do the things you used to do. And why is it that we do not do those things? It's because we no longer have the desire to do those things. We no longer have the desire to talk like that. And when we talk like that, it's going to drive us to our knees. When we do that, those things that break God's heart, that it's going to drive us to our knees. We can't live like that. The spirit that lives in us will not allow us to without convicting us of our wrongdoing. Can I get a witness in here? Amen. Can people say? Um, I wish I had, I had time to tell the story of when I saw God change my husband. But I don't have time to tell the story today. Uh, I, 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 I don't have the time today. I wish I did. I can tell you, and I can tell you when he changed it. I saw a brand new man. He was still by the Hankerson, but he was talking different. He was acting different. Things that he used to love, he lost the desire for them. And when he changed me, there were things that I no longer desired. There, there were places I no longer wanted to go to. I don't have time to tell you all about that today. But I just want to tell you that we can say it when we live holy lives. I know I've been changed. Sisters and brothers, church, do you have the real thing? Because ain't nothing like the real thing. I want to tell you, somebody may still be asking, what's the real thing? What is the real thing? I want to tell you that the real thing is Jesus. Because when we have Jesus, he changes our life. Amen? Jesus is the real thing. J-E-S-U-S. -S. Jesus is the real thing. Can I get a witness? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Yes, Jesus is the real thing. He is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Jesus is the real thing. He is the light of the world. Can I get a witness today? Hallelujah. Jesus is the real thing. He is the water of life. Can I get a witness? Jesus is the real thing. You eat of this bread, you will never.
And Jesus is present in this place. He's present to save anybody who needs to be saved today. He's present to deliver anyone from any addiction, from anything that binds you and holds you in bondage. Jesus is present here today. And he wants to deliver. He wants to heal. He wants to set free. As everyone stand to their feet. I make this appeal to you today. Because everyone in this room today is not saved. There are some of you who attend church. And you may be serving in some ministry, but you're not saved. It doesn't count. If you are here today, God wants to save you before it's too late. Can I say to you today, you need to give God your life while the blood is running warm in your veins. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. People are dying of all ages. And if you have not given the Lord your heart, if you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ, if you have not been saved when you die, heaven is not your home. I beg you, if you are here today, and you are not saved. Come. Come. Before it's too late. Come. I know the Lord is pricking at your heart. I know God is saying to you. I want you. You can't save yourself. None of us can. But God can save us. If you're here today. Don't be ashamed. To walk down this aisle and come so that you can confess by mouth the Lord Jesus because you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Come and give your life to God today. If you, if you want to be saved and, and you, you are afraid, then I'll meet you halfway. I'll meet you halfway. Come. Give your life to God. Before it's too late. Will you come as we sing? We Will you come? offer Christ come. to you. Oh, Will my you come? brother. Come. Please come. We Please come. Don't be distracted at this time. Listen, come. Come. Oh.
great message today. What a great message today. You out there that listen to this message today. All seek Christ. We are located 214 West Five Notch Road, North Augusta, South Carolina. You come, make this place, make this church, this fellowship, your place of worship. God loves you. God is a forgiving God. We thank you. Tune in next week. Those of you that are listening, right here, Hammer Grow Word Power Ministry, 214 West, North Augusta, South Carolina. Or you can call us. 803-279-1493. If you'd like to contribute, give a gift to this ministry. Give on Giblify. Or you can mail it or bring it. Hammond Grove Word Power Ministry, 214 West, 5 Notch Road, North Augusta, South Carolina. We see you. God bless you.